All right, Josh, do you think the tide has turned on Joe Milton? And I say that after being in the community like you, and I just get a bunch of people who it, it seems like that they're they're done with it after two losses and probably not playing for a championship. And even though Joe Milton, like, you know, arguably played his best game considering the p- opponent versus Alabama, especially in the first half, it just seems like people are frustrated. So has the tide turned on Joe Milton and, and can he get it back? Josh's appearance brought to you by Rick Terry Jewelry Design. They want to be your jeweler looking for affordable game day jewelry. How about the fire opals, the Tennessee tradition, Rick Terry Jewelry.com. So from the people you talk to, the callers you take, has the tide turned on Joe Milton? So you're asking, has it turned too negative for him at this point? Uh, yes, because he's he's coming off his best game as Tennessee's. I know that's I know that's that's the irony. Yeah. Um, but it still wasn't a great game, and no, I just, it wasn't. I and I just get the feeling that people have had enough. I mean, within mm-hmm. just the course of a couple of days through Tuesday. I had five people come up to me and like, I'm just, I'm done. Gaston Moore, for goodness sake, anybody else. Um, yeah, we've gotten some Gaston Moore messages to the show, and I I don't know what's going on when that happens. I honestly, I'm, it's bizarre to me. Uh, yeah, no, I, I think with Milton, to your question there, yes, a, a lot of people are done. A lot of people want to see Nico. Some do want to see Gaston Moore, and again, I don't get it. I don't know what's happening with that one. But, uh, but a lot of people want to see Nico, and I think there are multiple reasons. One, They've given up hope in Joe playing at a super high level that the Heisman Milton level play is just not going to happen. And that's kind of the expectation for some unknown reason. And then they want to see Nico, this five star guy that has all kinds of talent, but he's a guy that Tennessee's coaches have not actually shown any kind of confidence in that he would be ready to go out there and play at a high level. But uh, I don't think it's because of this past week. I think people were, um, I think a lot of people who are done with Milton now were done going into last week. They were done a few weeks ago. Uh, right or wrong, I think that's the case. Now, the funny thing is, is if I told you, hey, Tennessee's going to be five and two at this point before the season began, I don't know anybody that would have said, what? Why? Why would we be five and two? Uh, Tennessee's in the position it was supposed to be in by a lot of people at the start of the season. Nine and three was uh, the most common projection going in and Tennessee's in a position to get there. We'll see if they do. If Tennessee lose this week at Kentucky, then even more people are going to going to want to see a change at quarterback. But to this point, uh, I if, if you weren't done last week, I don't know why the Alabama game would change your mind to say we need a, a quarterback change. Wait, can I interrupt real quick, Caleb? I know you're going to jump yes, in there. Here's where I think it would change your mind is because your championship hopes are probably out the door. So you start thinking about Hey, how about getting that younger guy? You may have heard of him. I think it's Nico or something. Uh, how about getting him involved? So I think it's not it's not Milton's play necessarily on Saturday. I think it's just the fact that your championship dreams are are dead. And and I would argue this with you. I did not think that Tennessee would have two losses at this point in the season. I thought they were considerably better than Alabama. Or, I'm sorry, sorry, Florida. And I think Cooper May's injury cost them that absence. Go right ahead, sir. Yeah, I, th- I mean, I guess that's right, but um, am I not wrong, or am I wrong that nine and three was the most common projection? The the Vegas over under was nine and a half with the under the favorite. So, what were what were, the other loss was likely Texas A and M going in? It doesn't really matter which game it was. Tennessee was was largely projected to be in this kind of position at the start of the season. Uh, I think you're right about the championship part. Like, hey, we're not going to win a championship. Uh, by the way, I didn't have anybody saying to me last week, I think we can win the championship. I didn't have one person say, I like our chances for the SEC title the rest of the way. Uh, also, that is just flawed logic. Your goal is to win as many games as possible. If Nico gives them a better chance to win at Kentucky, all right, uh, go with him. I would have no problem with that. But if you're if you're starting Nico in October to get ready for next year, one, I don't think it really works that way. Two, that is, uh, that is how you potentially splinter a program when they watch you play somebody for the future when you have a bunch of seniors who are trying to play well right now um josh i actually want to you know we were talking about this and it took me to a place that i kind of want to put to the floor to both you guys because is this the flaw of is this is this the 
curse of the fact that the college football playoff has started where all of a sudden for 140 years of college football before then no one would have said throw the season after two losses because you can't win a title it's title or bust or throw the season but now like you're i'm with you and i've seen this i've seen this on the message boards a lot too because of alabama a lot of tennessee fans are saying well there's no way we can win a title now so just throw the season and get nico in and it's like is that is this a new thing where fans don't see any difference between nine wins and six wins and that's is that the result of the expanded college football playoff where everybody just thinks championship or bust now well it's definitely not everybody but it's uh it's enough people for us to talk about it that to me is the difference because you know who's going to see a big difference in nine wins and six or seven wins everybody you go seven and five not one person's going to be happy go nine and three a lot of people are going to be happy you go nine and three with nico well then sure people would be excited because you have that momentum that can be carried over it becomes the narrative just like joe starting and winning the orange bowl created this narrative that hey he's all the way fixed he's going to go compete for a title this year and might have a chance to win the heisman based off one game the orange bowl and uh if nico were to have some kind of success and the team were to win with him then that would boost the narrative it also wouldn't actually mean anything for what they would be able to do uh next season but yes the playoff has affected a lot of the conversation because if you're going eight and four or nine and three it's a yawner to a lot of people when it shouldn't be that way uh tennessee was tennessee was a potential championship contender it was not a championship favorite if tennessee goes nine and three it's close to where people thought now if tennessee does worse again if tennessee loses this week or if tennessee loses two games in november and finishes eight and four surely not seven and five then people will be disappointed people will be upset by that not everybody but you add multiple losses to the record now that'll leave a lot of people disappointed with the rest of the season i agree with that but let me ask you why you think the Gaston Moore thing is so absolutely crazy. Because here's what Jimmy what? Hobbs talked about. Okay, I know. Let, 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 let me ask you. Because here's what Jimmy Hobbs said on the program yesterday. He said that he had been told that Nico was not ready. Here's what I've been told about Nico. That if he had to go out there and play, he would be ready. Um, but that may mean a limited offense. Okay. So if he's not ready, I'm just laying this scenario out there. I'm not advocating Gaston Moore, okay? But let me lay this scenario out there. He's not quite ready. Joe Milton struggles. Would you not ever even no. consider it? No, no, that's uh, absurd. You don't take a senior starter uh, on a team that's winning to this point. They're five and two. They're ranked. And even if he's struggling in the middle of the game, say, you know what, we're going to bench the senior starter instead of letting him figure things out. Because, by the way, if he's if he's struggling, his other teammates are probably struggling uh, in some way as well. We've just seen it over and over and over again. But say, hey, we're going to pull the senior starter who has done enough to help us get to this point, and we're going to put in a walk-on quarterback who's never played a meaningful snap in an SEC game. No. No, it's a ridiculous idea. No, I guess I'm rolling it back to the beginning of the season. I, I mean, I didn't think that Joe Milton was going to be an efficient what? quarterback from the get. I guess I was rolling it back to the beginning of the season. I thought like there should have been, been an earlier? open. Pardon me? They should have considered it earlier? I think they should have considered something besides uh, um, Joe earlier, for like sure. Like Gaston Moore, the walk-on quarterback who's never played? You think they should have considered putting – like, I'm not even saying – no to doing it. I'm saying no to the idea. Like if a coach broached that in a meeting and said, hey, I know we've got this guy that's uber talented and we've invested in and his teammates uh, are supporting him. But what if we get the walk on and we jump over the five star super talented freshman and we put the walk on player and like like maybe he's Stetson Bennett, but nobody's ever told me anything close to Gaston Moore being Stetson Bennett. So do I think, and when, like, when would they have done this? I don't uh, no, No, they should not have considered Gaston Moore. No, I just think at the bottom, at the end of the day, there is a glass ceiling with Joe Milton. He is, it was not, I never thought. Well, I mean, I think that's Tennessee the case across most of college football. Like look, look around the country. This is to me. This is partly a Hendon problem. Hendon was so special that that's kind of what 
people hoped Joe could be, and he wasn't going to be that. I thought going in, Joe, with his physical talent, yeah, had a lot of potential, but realistically was going to be kind of a middle-of-the-pack quarterback in the SEC. And I think he's middle to bottom. Uh, He's better with the running aspect. That's probably what they needed more of from him because I think him running the football is really effective in this offense. I know he had the the knee issue and rib issue earlier, and that probably affected him in some ways. But like I, I just I need to hear something about Gaston Moore to say, yeah, you consider th- that guy on a team that was ranked high with big aspirations that you're going to pull the plug on a, a senior who has the backing of his teammates for a walk on quarterback who I've never heard any reason to believe that he would go out and win big games in the SEC. Because if you go to, if you, if you bench a senior and you go to a walk on player and you lose good luck. No, nope. coming I, back. I, I understand what you're saying, but let me ask you this. Would Gaston Moore have, did Tennessee still be, uh, would, would they still have two losses? Uh, I'm not telling you, I believe this. I'm just telling you what comes up in conversation with uh, who repeatedly with people I talk to that, recognize me and say hey well i mean i just want to bring this up um would tennessee have the 11th rated best quarterback in the sec which joe milton is and would they have two losses at this point if they had started gaston moore not that they should have but could gas would gaston moore have done better worse or the same well, I've never really seen him play, so I, I guess I need that qualifier. That applies to Nico as well, besides snaps that don't and, matter. And but me as well. My guess, as well. My, my, would the record be the same? I mean, maybe, but would the play be worse? Yeah, for sure there's the potential for that. This this kind of reminds me of the uh, the Jarrett Garantano stuff, and that, and those were scholarship backups, but people were like, well, we'll play somebody else. And at one point, I was like, okay, you want to play Brian Maurer? Play Brian Maurer. And then he went out there and played, and you know what he, we found out? He was worse than Jared Garantano. And then JT Shrout played. He's like, oh, well, let's give Shrout a chance. He he was well thought of at Elite 11. Uh, he has a good arm. He's like, yeah, he does. Put him out there. See how it goes. And it went very poorly. He was worse than Jared Garantano. So now we're talking about Joe Milton, who's going to be drafted into the NFL. And the idea of benching him for a walk-on quarterback? No. <laughs> No, and I, wanna... I, don't, I, I you you like Joe Milton a lot more than I do. I mean, I don't know well, if he's going to be drafting the NFL. Oh, I got to drop this. In. He'll be drafted. Lunch I got to drop this in there uh, real quick, too. This is funny we're talking about this because any other era, and if it's not Josh Heupel's offense, if we're talking about a quarterback completing 63% of his passes with 12 touchdowns and four interceptions, which is Joe Milton's stat line, I mean, like, what are we doing? Any... What, are, what are we talking about? Gaston Moore, are you guys serious? The day, day, no, I'm not serious. serious. Like, no, me... I, I'm not no. serious. I'm saying this is crazy. It, this is the craziest thing I've I've heard. I'll tell you exactly what Nico, I'll tell you exactly. Gaston Moore. At the start I'll of the tell season. you exactly what I'm serious about. I'm not saying they should have played Gaston Moore. I'm sure I'm saying they should have had an open quarterback competition with Nico. My question is, would they be any worse off had they played Gaston Moore? Uh, they would not be better off. So I will say that with great confidence. Would they be worse off? I think the play would have been worse. Yes. Potentially record wise, they could be worse for sure. And I say that because they haven't, I don't think they've won five games because of quarterback play. Excuse me. But the thing I worry about is you make this kind of move and the locker room doesn't have confidence in its quarterback is the defense playing at the same level that we've seen is special teams making those plays. They might've lost the Texas A&M game for sure with Gaston Moore instead of Joe Milton. I say that knowing that he only threw for a hundred yards against Texas A&M, but I say that because I don't know the defense is, I just, I, what that does to a locker room when Joe's the guy and they've seen him put in the work. And by the way, at the time they didn't expect him to, to have the issues that he's had. If you say, yeah, you know what, let's just go with the walk on instead. If you bring that up, if they hear that you're thinking about that, that would be a big problem. Now, my point is that, he would have done every bit as good from what I've seen from Joe Milton. He would have done every bit as good. And no, I wouldn't have played him. I would have, I would have considered Nico and maybe Joe Milton still wins that battle, but Gaston Moore could have done every bit as good. And uh, I think there's, I think you, I think you like Joe Milton too much. I think there's a process. No, issue. I haven't said anything. I haven't said, what if I said this segment about Joe Milton in a, a super positive light? I'm talking about the team aspect, the team impact. Yeah. But take that's, a, that, but that, but that, I don't see. I don't buy that because the, the the team aspect. Yes, you can lose the team by playing the more talented quarterback. 
um, it, as they did with Eric Ainge over Rick Clawson. So you can lose the team either way. How many of these teammates, yeah, they love Joe, but they're like, I, I can tell you one person within the program told me they were more stunned that Joe Milton played well against Clemson than vice versa, that that was the aberration not what we've seen this year, that they were stunned he played so well against Okay, Clemson. Okay, well, tell me what you've heard about Gaston Moore then. I haven't heard anything about Gaston That's Moore. That's my point. <laughs> That's I mean, my I'm point. I'm not suggesting that he would be – I'm I'm not suggesting that he should start the season. I'm just telling you that Joe Milton ultimately was given the job. I don't think you should be given a job in football. Well, given a job, like, what exactly does that mean? There was no question that he would be the guy, and there was no reason. Like, you think there should have been a competition in the spring between Joe Milton and Gaston Moore for the job? Uh, you think no, they should I have said, it's... hey, this is open between Joe no, and No, but Gaston. I think it's – no, my point is I think there should have been a, comp a competition between Nico and Joe and that the play has been so bad that a walk-on could have done every bit as good. Well – I mean, like that, that. There's nothing to prove one way or the other on that. So, would Tennessee's record be worse? Maybe, maybe not. I don't know. But I, I, I can say with the utmost confidence that it would have been a horrible idea for them two months ago to say, you know what? Let's take a look at Gaston Moore. Let's give him some first team reps. Joe, go stand over there. Uh, Gaston's going to take a shot at this in practice. Would have been a terrible idea. Mm -hmm. Well. Tennessee being the same spot is my only point. Yes, it, they would have lost a lot of people. They, <laughs> I mean, they maybe, lost a lot maybe, of but, teammates. Yeah, they they wouldn't be better. They would not be better off. And you you know how this place is, Dave. You've been around Knoxville for a long time. You've been around Tennessee football for a long time. If Tennessee went to a walk on quarterback, let's say they were five and two, and we didn't see Joe be able to play through the season, people would have been saying, "Well." Could we be better? Like you were just talking about championship hopes at the start of the segment. So people had those hopes. People people thought that earlier in the season. So if you went to, to Gaston more, I just, no way. thing that I hear more and more, which I don't think illustrates that Gaston Moore is great. I think it illustrates, which was the original question, that people, the tide is completely turned against Joe. And he would have to have a Jonathan Crompton-like renaissance in the second half of this season to get that back and be remembered fondly as Crompton was. And I don't think that Milton can get it back.